So then, good morning, everyone. Dobro jutro. Uh, I welcome you all to this, uh, to this uh, uh, hopefully also effective presentation on how to give effective presentations. Come in, come in. So I will also try to do a recording and try to do a, a, a live stream. So at first I want to, because the people also there uh, show the screen, share my screen, which should work now. Okay, so. Some, some organizational matters, some typical questions at the beginning. Uh, can, can you have the slides? Yes, sure. Um, I, will, I will have a download link at the end that you can scan with a QR code that you can scan with your phone and then you can just download the slides if you like. As said, will there be a recording? Maybe, let's see if it works. Maybe it works, maybe not. And uh, the last question is, uh, if you have questions in between, um, don't hesitate to ask your questions if you like, uh, just whatever, raise your arm or just, just uh, ask the question. I will also have an online tool where you maybe can um, ask anonymous questions and see the questions of other people. If people ask questions there, uh, we will see. Um, you, may, you may also maybe ask questions in Russian and then the students can translate them into English for me, but then, of course, I will answer them in English. Maybe someone needs to translate back. We, we will see if this works. Okay, so if you like, this is this uh, anonymous chat uh, and, and, and question wall. If you would like to uh, scan this QR code, uh, I, will, I will leave this slide on for a second so that everyone can, can do it. And okay, and if, if everyone has done so, I will I will uh, shortly go to this page because uh, it's in German, unfortunately. Um, oh, some something is, is in German. You have to you have to push some button there. So I don't see any smartphones anymore. So let me shortly uh, change to my browser. If you go to this page, it should look like this, and then you say accept, and then you can um, with this plus, then you can you can ask some questions there on this on this website um, and just just ask your question uh, you can type in your name if you like but you don't necessarily have to okay so we will we will come back to this at the end so first question of course is why you should or why are you usually giving presentations um, if you are a student uh, and want to become a researcher or if you are a researcher uh, already you usually have to go to conferences or you want to go to conferences and to present uh, your results. Um, also, if you're working somewhere in a company, you have to present some results. And if you are a student, you maybe have to apply for a stipend to go to Germany for one semester. So also maybe you need to give a presentation there. The, fr from, my, um, from my experience, the maybe uh, most impressive presentation that I have ever given was a, was a science slam. Uh, in Leipzig, you can see big auditorium, a big uh, theater, maybe, I don't know, 500, 600 people. And it was very funny because there was, I mean, you know, Science Slam is a little bit talking about your scientific results in a funny way. And there was an old lady who was laughing all the time uh, and who sheared up the whole other audience. It was, it was a very, very nice and very interesting talk. So I, I have another question for you. Um, some short survey which would be interesting for me, how many presentations, and there should be uh, two sliders on this page, how many presentations have you seen and how many presentations have you given so far in your life? And it already seems to work. Some more people are, are scanning the page. So I will switch my window here and go to uh, my presentations. And um, I, I think I have to start it here. 
Okay, and then you can see how these how these numbers are changing and numbers adjusting a little bit. So the, the scale here for me was from very few, one to really a lot. This was like, uh, what, what I said, I need to set some scale there. So I set a hundred. Mm, okay, so very many different results, very many different results. Okay, and just mm, very few of them, let's say have been, have been effective presentations. Okay. So, but, but when I look at this and when I look at this and, and also here that must, must also be some experts about presentations in this room. Okay, so then another short disclaimer at the beginning. Um, I'm also not, let's say a trainer for effective presentations. I'm an engineer. So everything that I will tell is also a little bit from the point of an engineer. And with this, I have a, another question for you. And, and this will be the last one for the beginning. And I will try not to stand too much in the way for people sitting to my left. Um, and the question is what makes a bad and ineffective presentation from your point of view? And I think you can just write short head words. And I'm looking to my students. Does it work? It's always a little bit of a question if this stuff works. Okay. So as I don't see any smartphones anymore pointing to the projection screen, I will go back to my browser. And We'll take a look at the results already. Okay, and we see some results. Um, a lot of words, this is also okay. <laughs> something that I would say, if you have too much text on the slide, this is probably not a very good uh, presentation. Uh, again, we see a lot of words, many information on one slide, uh, people that are bad prepared, and it's boring, no pictures. Um, and people are writing interesting stuff. Uh, that this is this is usually this what this is usually what happens. I mean, it's, I, I do this also with students a lot. Um, okay. And okay, and sometimes maybe the speaker is too too shy. And now the biggest thing that we have a lot lots of words, too many texts on the slides. Okay. So um, let me change back to the slide. So what, what I'm now trying to tell a little bit, here's a short overview. So I've, I've structured this a little bit in how to reach your audience, yeah, then how to um, make how, how to make a good structure for the presentation, then how to create useful slides that are really a useful tool for, for your presentation. And as I said, because I'm an engineer, I'm an engineer and because I expected that also some engineers are sitting here in the room, um, an interesting thing for engineering talks is you usually want to present some data. So how, how do you visualize your data? And new in this year, um, because many talks are also happening online via Zoom or via other video conferencing system, I, I would like to give you some advice on how to give good online talks and what to take care about this. Okay, so um, I think we already have this. So first thing is how to reach your audience. And there are some basic principles. Um, so one thing is you should know your audience a little bit in advance and sh you should know their, their previous knowledge because it does not make sense to tell them something that they already know. And it does not make sense to tell them anything that they will not understand at all. And I think this is a little bit the toughest part because you never know or you never know really what, what your audience may be. Then you usually have limited time. So concentrate on the important things. Try to tell a story. People like stories and try to be yourself. Don't, don't pretend to be someone else. And um, good thing is always to visualize as we've seen, use pictures. Uh, also try to be a little funny. And um, yeah, as we've seen, don't, don't put too much text on the slides. And also try to keep on time. This is usually uh, quite hard, 
But if you if you give a talk at the conference and you are only allowed to speak 20 minutes, you cannot speak 25 minutes because you're stealing time from other speakers. And uh, what is what is maybe some uh, some interesting thing? Uh, do you know this Ig Nobel Prize? This kind of funny Nobel Prize um, that is also usually awarded every year. And I think the researchers there are allowed to give a five minute presentation, very short presentation. And if the five minutes are over. They will send some small child to the stage and this child will, will do like this and will say stop i'm bored stop i'm bored <laughs> and then you, you you somehow really want to stop so next thing is you should speak without notes uh, don't don't have any notes on your smartphone or don't have any handwritten notes because then usually you will read from these notes it will be very boring for your audience there's maybe one exception for this if you give a very let's say mathematical talk and you really Want to take care that all the mathematics that you're talking about are correct. Um, yeah, so if you're if you're a mathematician, then maybe it's okay to have some notes about your the mathematical content of your presentation. Some some don'ts, um, ways to annoy your audience, speak too fast. I usually speak a little fast, I know. Um, it's also difficult if you speak too slow and if it will everything. Uh, and don't don't mumble, don't uh -huh, uh -huh, no, uh -huh, don't that no one can understand. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, then it's it always depends a little bit on the room. What what lots of speakers do, they they stand all the time like this and just focus on the projection screen and and um, don't look into the audience. Try to look into the audience as often as you can. Uh, some some other way is um, you usually have this pointer and this clicker and it has, it has some 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 laser pointer. So really use it only if you want to highlight something don't don't flash it constantly all the time because you don't want to highlight all the time everything mm. that's also a funny story we have a colleague in magdeburg and he usually gives presentations with lots of formulas and then he always says as you can see in this formula and this is very important this, and and then you know there are these laser pointers that have not just one beam but 10 or 20 or so, so many dots. And when we, we as a present, we, we gave him such a laser pointer and then, oh, everything was like showing up. Okay, this was the wrong button. Okay. Um, yeah, and then try to be prepared. Don't, don't seem to be unprepared, uh, whatever, be appropriately dressed and, and uh, don't, don't, don't stand like this all the time because it looks like you don't want to inter really interact with the audience. Okay, if you know someone in the audience um, can be quite good. I mean, this room is very small. Um, if someone is that you know is sitting in the last row and if he is not able to understand you because you're speaking too quiet, then he can maybe show, show this sign. We usually do this with the student conferences so that students are, okay, I have to speak a little louder so that everyone in the room is able to understand me. Okay, then how to structure your presentation. It should be always good that the audience know, okay, where we will start, uh, what is the goal, and what is a little bit the way how we, how we reach this goal. Um, for engineering talks, there's usually, let's say, a very generic structure. Um, you give some introduction, you talk about some fundamentals of your work, you maybe show some experiments and some simulations, you discuss the results, and then there will be a summary. This is, usually a good structure to do it like this but let's say this example here is a little bit too generic yeah so if <laughs> this would fit to 95 percent of all conference talks so um then make it a little bit more precise say okay i will give an introduction to this in this topic and i will show you fundamentals of this and this and we will do talk about simulations using this software or whatever so it's the same structure but it's a bit more precise people get a let, better idea about this uh, and if you if you plan the time for your presentation, um, usually plan something like one minute, maybe two minutes per slide. And then you can see that in a, yeah, in a let's say 20 minute talk, you, you can only give some information. You can, you can make people aware of your work so that they know, okay, this sounds interesting. I will read the paper. I will read the longer report about this. And if you really want to give some more detailed insight into some topic uh, you need more time like a little bit like in a lecture so uh, more ways to annoy your audience have a too detailed structure have a structure with let's say more than seven points people cannot remember more than seven points 
Mm, also, it's not good to spend too much time explaining this. And um, it's also not good to talk about the stuff that you have done in a chronological order. If you present your research, if you present your work, it's not a diary. You don't say, okay, in the first month I have done this and this, and in the second month I have done this and this, more, more cl clustered, structured in a different way. Um, and it's also, of course, not good to directly jump into your topic. There should be some motivation. There should be some introduction at the beginning. And um, yeah, th this is if you if you have no really well defined goal, and if the sequence, if the order of the slides seems arbitrary, then this of course does not make too much sense. There's a um, funny picture from XKCD. Um, popular website with nerd humor um, about this that yeah, if, <laughs> if you keep saying bear with me for a moment you can show people almost up into the slides <laughs> but okay this is of course not a good talk okay so then um, let's jump to the next chapter which is about how to create useful slides and the first thing maybe is uh, the first important thing is um, Slides are only a tool, so you can you can give uh, a, still a very good presentation if you have bad slides, and even if you have perfect slides, you can still give a very bad presentation. And I've seen also lots of excellent presentations from people who had not any slides at all, who were just speaking without slides. Um, it's of course difficult if you want to explain people again engineering stuff because usually you want to have some, some pictures and some diagrams and some data, but at the end, they are just a tool. Uh, don't concentrate too much on the slides maybe. So then the common, most common mistake as we have seen um, also in your comments about bad presentations is if you put too much text on the slides, I can now at the moment exactly see what happens because what happens is people will read what is written on the slides. They will not listen. You are not listening to me anymore at the moment. You're just reading this. And then you're finished with reading this. And then you say, okay, now I understood what the person would like to talk about. And then you, you, you still will not listen anymore. And you will check your WhatsApp messages on your cell phone and do, do other stuff and so on. So don't, don't do this. Don't put text on the slide because people will read it, won't listen to you anymore. It's better to try to explain it freely or try to try to visualize it or try to put it in head words. So if we take the same information that you all have read it now. Yeah. So if, if we have, so if this, is, this is what will happen, people read the slides. So um, th the same thing is um, if, you, if you take the same information and just put it in head words, um, people cannot read so much, so they won't read that long. They will sooner start to listen to you again. And you can explain a little bit. Yeah, electromagnetic compatibility is the ability of some device and so to function in a certain environment without interfering with each other. And we can split it up into immunity and emission and so on and so on. And what would be even better is if you, as you said, if you take a picture, if you take a diagram, if you take some, some schematic like this, and then on the schematic, explain people what electromagnetic compatibility is. Yeah? And it's about interference between devices and we have a source of a disturbance and we have a victim and there can be different coupling paths and so on. And then it's people get a much better impression on what you're talking about and they will listen to you. Yeah? And you, you, the slides, the picture is a useful tool for you to better explain what happened. Okay, then some further advice. Um, I would usually suggest to, to use like one, one message per slide, one, inform, one important information per slide, not too many informations on one slide. This is also what, what you already said in the beginning and use pictures or use short head words only. There's typically this one six six rule on one slide, put six head words maximum and each head, each, um, head word should maximum consist of six words mm. don't use a too fancy a too fancy design mm. just just plain design take care that there's good contrast uh, that you have large letter this this everything is well readable and also try to use colors not arbitrarily but but wisely so i always have for for the say the good stuff i have green for the bad stuff i have red and for the 
things that are maybe not that important, I, I use this gray color. And then it's good to number your slides because if people at the end of the talk want to ask specific questions, they don't have to say, can you go back to the slide again where we have seen this funny picture or this and this? They can say, okay, can you please go back to slide 28 uh, because I have a question related to the slide. And then if you give presentations at a conference, it's always good to also have, let's say, your name and the title of the presentation on each and every slide. Because on large conferences, there are many talks in parallel and people are hopping from one room into the other room. And then if they come to the room and the presentation already started, they want to know, oh, am, am I listening to the right presentation? Is this the right talk? So it's good to have um, your, your name and the title on, on, on every slide again, repeated on every slide. So more ways to annoy your audience, uh, have, have bad prepared slides with typos or uh, with very complicated formulas. But again, if it's a scientific talk, if it's an engineering talk, you want to have some formulas there, um, have strange abbreviations, strange notation in your formulas. Uh, usually don't use this font because it's, it's less readable on bad projectors. Mm, don't use these fancy animations that one slide will explode and the next slide will, will slide in. And so this is, it, it, it looks nice one time, two times, but then it's, it's not funny anymore. And also don't use too many different colors. Okay, so finally, um, slides should only visualize, should only try to help you explain what you would like to explain. Still, some people um, expect that slides are also a documentation of the talk. And let's say if you, um, if you, if you get everything that was told in the, in the presentation, in the talk, also from the slides, then it was a bad talk or it was bad slides. So um, if, if people should get some information later on, prepare some handout for them, or maybe record it like I do now, what, I don't know. Mm, and some people also use, of course, the, the slides as their manuscript, but then it's also, as we have seen, a bad presentation because there will be too many texts on the slide. So if you need some notes, then, yeah, okay, then maybe use your cell phone or maybe use the second screen where you have some, some short head words, but um, typically then not a good presentation. So last thing, how to visualize your data. Mm, this is a diagram. <laughs> But it's really bad because there are no, no access labels. Um, the, the figure quality is very bad. It's a raster graphic. If I would zoom in, um, we, should, we would see that there are also compression artifacts and so on. And you do not really get some idea uh, what, what is displayed here. So um, there's again some funny XKCD comic about this. I, I will not explain it. move my camera window. Okay. Okay. Okay, I, I think it's okay. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's a little better if we do it like this and say, okay, uh, we, we add this here and we add this there, but still the figure is bad and why we have this gray background and so on. And again, if I, if I zoom in, if we would have a better projector, you can see that the picture quality is really, really bad. Mm. So this is the same sample um, or the, the, the same example improved. Uh, so we have clear access labels, uh, we have a grid and so on. And now if I zoom in, you can see that I can arbitrarily rescale it and it still will always look perfect. And the, the idea behind this is you should not use, um, for, for diagrams and like this, you should not use this raster graphics because they consist of single pixels. If you enlarge them or if you show them in different sizes, they, they do not rescale. Um, use vector graphics instead. And then they, they can be printed or displayed on small screens, on large screens. They will always look perfect. 
Okay, and some more ways to annoy your audience. Don't put too many numbers on one slide. Don't also don't use strange number format. That is maybe directly the output of your Python or MATLAB or whatever script. Um, don't use raw output uh, from, from uh, simulations. Um, no one will really get what you are trying to explain with this uh, table here. And also don't, I think this is also some problem. People usually, they write a paper, they have a diagram, which looks very nice there. And then they copy it directly in their slides. And then it's, an, it's a nice diagram, but the font is just too small and people are not able to read it. You have to enlarge the font to, to make it visible for everyone. And if you use uh, third party figures from someone else, well, give the reference to the source, uh, give credit to these people. Okay, so last section is about what you should take care about in online talks. And to be honest, I think the future will always be a little bit that presentations will be, some presentations will be online, will be hybrid, people will be sitting in the room like now. I'm not sure how many people are watching this online right now. I, I, I will check later. Um, so there, the most important thing is take care of good audio quality. Um, make sure that people can properly hear you because otherwise it will be very difficult for them to follow. So um, wear a good microphone. I've, I've, I've um, different selections here. And so what I can maybe do now, um, it's also interesting again for me. Um, of course, people in the room won't know the difference, but you can take a look at the recording later on. What, what people I think usually do is they use the internal microphone of their computer. And I will just for a moment now switch to the internal microphone of my computer, which is here. And now, of course, in the room, you won't know the difference, but in the recording, it should sound strange now, more echo from the room and so on. So, better thing is um, usually take the microphone that is built in into your webcam. So I will, I will switch to this microphone for a second uh, for the recording. So this is this one here, maybe this room, it will not sound too much better, but it should, should be a little better. And then um, what is typically better are these headsets that are quite close, but I don't, I don't like them because you're always looking a bit like an astronaut, uh, um, cosmonaut. So I, I like to have this uh, Lavalier mics and I will go back to this one, uh, which should be, should be this one here. Okay. Yeah, so, so try to use such a microphone. Um, they usually give you the best quality uh, that you would like for some online talk. So then, uh, because what, what I always uh, compare this with is, let's say, um, a poor audio quality in online talks is a little bit like if you have bad breath in, in, a, in a normal talk. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not bad for you, it's bad for the other persons. <laughs> and, and depending on the, the, the other persons, people will not, will not really tell you. They, they won't tell you, oh, you have bad breath today. And they won't tell you, oh, you, you, you really have a bad microphone today. You should take, more take care of your audio quality. So the next thing is how to get good video quality. And there, the thing is um, light beats the camera. So you can have the best camera in the world. If you have bad lighting, um, you won't get a good picture. And I've also some photos that explain this. And I think the most common mistake that people do is they sit in front of their window. So the window behind them is very, very bright, um, but they are just, you just see the, the, black, um, the black shadow. So don't do this. Mm, this is exactly the opposite. This is me looking into the window or fa facing towards the window. I think there you get the best lighting. This is my office in Magdeburg. Uh, and then you can see if you, uh, if you sit like, like I'm standing right now, but I've positioned my camera a little bit like here so that I can use the light um, from the window too. Um, if you're sitting 
let's say 90 degree to the window, usually one side of you will be very bright and the other side will be very dark. It's also not, not looking too, too good. Um, this is the same thing with just the lights from the ceiling uh, switched on. Um, I, I don't have too much hair, unfortunately, anymore. So that is also not looking too good. Um, th this is the typical, if you use the camera that is built in, into your laptop, then you get the classical chin and, and nose shot. People can look if your, if your nose is uh, clean. And this is also looking quite good. Um, here I'm, I'm sitting like to this window, but I have a very powerful light shining on me from this side really i don't know a 500 watt something something very bright uh, but then um okay then you can you can also win against the light of the window so in summary um if you want to go good give good presentations um practice a little bit mm, you you cannot practice too much i think um, know your technical equipment a little bit so that you don't run into technical problems. No, okay, I need to, how, how to connect the projector, maybe test in advance um, how to do this. Also how these clickers work and how to connect whatever your microphone if you need some. And easier said than done, <laughs> don't be nervous or at least don't try to be so nervous, uh, but I have no good tips on how to, uh, how to don't be that nervous, but may maybe again, practicing helps uh, give some talks that usually helps and learn from other good presentations. And this is the video that I usually refer to um, from my point of view and a very excellent presentation when Steve Jobs uh, introduces the first iPhone in uh, 2007 um, and the recording you find on YouTube or on various other video platforms. This is, this is from my point of view, a very excellent presentation. So thanks for this. Thanks for your time. Um, this is the link if you want to download the slides and I will show it for a second until all people have, who would like to have the sky, uh, slides have, have scanned the QR code with their cell phone. And then I will switch to the, to the question tool. And then of course, we are also open for questions within the room from, from the audience in the room and I'm not sure I can maybe um, open up my my, uh, my 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 live stream channel here and see if there are questions in the chat there. Okay, so I don't see any cell phones anymore, so I will switch to the question tool. Okay, <laughs> and, there's, and there's just one question, uh, which says, how you're doing? Excellent, great, Adlitschner. Okay, so then more, more questions from within the room. No, I have one, but sure. it's, uh, it's a bit off the topic. No problem. Uh, I didn't the plan of the presentation to the top of the screen. I mean, didn't you? So I, I, I don't get the question again. Like, like, like this, this one here? Yeah, uh, I, I do my presentations in LaTeX and uh, there is a template in LaTeX who does this stuff automatically. So you, you structure your presentation into sections and then each slide will be such this small dot and then uh, you can if you skip through the slides and I think this is also very useful for the audience because you can see okay we are we are there it's, it's a little bit like a like a um, completion bar some intermediate overview but this is what you get when you do slides in latex if you like I can send you there there's also some template available on the internet I can I can Send you a link later on, or I can. I've I've not edited here. I think I just 
just have to run later. Okay, more questions. Sure. Sorry. Uh, you spoke about handouts. Mm -hmm. Does it depend on the task whether they are needed? What is the yeah, I mean, it depends on, uh, let's say, what is your audience and if they should do something more, something further with the information from your talk or from your presentation. Let's say if you, if you go to a, to a scientific conference to present your results, then usually you, you present the work of let's say one year or two years and you cannot present everything that you have done in one year or two years. So usually you have a report, a longer report about your work, like, like a thesis, something like this, or you have written a, a six page or four page paper. And as I said, in the, if you go to a conference and you give a talk, um, you don't and you cannot and you do not want to give people all the information what you have done but you can try to, to give them an overview of okay look this, this is what I have done and maybe this is interesting for you and if this is interesting for you then please read my paper or please read my thesis or please read my report because there you find all the all the more information that you're really interested in and so always think a little bit of presentations that um, don't give people all the information because you cannot do this time is limited um, make them aware of that this information exists and, and where to find it. That's a little bit the idea, I would say. That, does, this, does this answer the question? Okay. And if, if you are going, I don't know, if you are going to some company to present a, a product that you built and that you would try to sell and you, you give a presentation about the product, then of course I would also prepare like a handout or like a flyer or some advertisement brochure about your product that people can take with them and say, oh, this is all, this looks interesting. This looks good. I want to buy it. There was one more question. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, with all these, uh, these relation concept, concepts, um, online tools and presentations have been utilized due to their sites more often than uh, mm -hmm. what do you think? Could the online presentations and online talks be effective, as in giving it in real? Because nowadays people argue, argue to be online presentations not effective, right? Very good question. Uh, I will I will shortly try to repeat it. Um, so. Can online presentations be effective? And what maybe you need to do to make effective online presentations? Um, and so from, from my point of view, I think online presentations can be, can be very effective and they can have some advantages because people don't need to travel. If you, are, if you are just want to listen to a 30 minute presentation, uh, you don't want to go by two hours by train or go with some airplane to some, someone else, somewhere else just to listen to this uh, 30 minute presentation. You can also attend it online. And I think the, I think also conferences and stuff will change because people will more concentrate on conferences about the networking and about uh, the, the social gatherings and about the get togethers and not concentrate so much anymore on the talks because the talks you can also deliver online or you can record them as a video and people can listen to the presentations on video if they like so um, the, the problem with online presentations is of course that you are not so directly and not so well connected to your audience and if it's just a little a little a little boring then people will do someone something else yeah so they will check their emails they will do other stuff, they will do some other work here and there. Um, so if you want to give, let's say, a good online talk or a good online lecture, there must be much more possibilities for interaction. You, 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 need, to, uh, you need to restructure your material and you need to have more, more quizzes, more things where people can participate. And, and uh, as we've seen in the beginning, yeah. Um, adjust some sliders, uh, put some words somewhere, give their own opinion, um, try to do more, more, more interactive stuff. And if you, if you, let's say, only want to give some information, 
mm, you don't need to have a live talk. You can pre-record it as a video and send the people the link to the video and then people can watch it uh, when they like and where they like and they can watch it on half speed or they can watch it at double speed. Um, they can repeat it if they did not properly understand something. And so if you are, if let's say if you have a lecture with 100 students and you give it as a live online lecture, then you always have the problem that it will only fit for, for a small number of students. And for some, it will be too slow. For some, it will be too fast. And you notice this in a classical lecture hall because you can, you can look a little bit at the faces of the people, but you can't, can't do this on online talks because people usually don't turn on their cameras uh, or the internet connection is too bad so that it doesn't allow them to turn on their cameras and so on. Does, does this answer the question a little bit? Yeah, I have a couple of them. Sure, you know, go ahead, go, go ahead. Yeah, so how is it in Germany? What's the approximate percentage of the register that even is online? Mm -hmm. and the other question, there is always a problem with, with the longer works, right? Because it's good to be that frequent. So we have to have the students be present at the room and have to show them, so how do we do it? Okay, very good question. So the first question was uh, how, how are online or uh, on-site or hybrid lectures in Germany organized? I would say we are now, we, are, we have now finished the third COVID semester. In the first one, everything was happening online. In the, in the second one, in the last winter term, no, we have already finished the, the fourth COVID semester, I would say. Uh, so in the, in the, in the last, um, winter semester last thing we we try to have things hybrid uh, with students in the room and students connected via zoom but then cases increased so we shut down everything on site again and did everything online and the same in the last summer term and this winter term we really had this hybrid approach so the larger lectures were always with students in the room and some students connected via video conferencing system and this worked out quite well it's 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 a little difficult from the technical equipment yeah you need good cameras you need good microphones you you need all the stuff uh, powerful computers to handle all the data um, but it worked out quite well at least for the larger lectures to have them in the hybrid way and then for exercises we decided um, that we said some exercises will just happen on site and some exercises will be completely online so that we don't have this technical difficulty of doing this good hybrid stuff with people in the room and online at, at the very same time. And with laboratory experiments, it's of course always difficult um, because people would um, push some buttons at some instruments, plug some cables together, do stuff like this. And yeah, so there, there, there are two approaches or let's say there are three approaches, one is, you do completely virtual experiments. So you, you can virtualize your, your lab bench um, or your lab desk, and then people plug virtual cables together and push virtual buttons with their mouse on virtual instruments. Works quite well. The second approach is having remote laboratories. So there's real equipment somewhere in a laboratory, but people are uh, remote controlling it over the internet. But at the end, they get real data back from, from real samples, from real experiments, and then connect with other students again via video conferencing system. And um, the, the, the approach that I used was, again, for our GRIAD students um, who, who have been in Magdeburg in the last winter term and in this winter term, um, the students are all living together in rooms and they're having breakfast together and they're having lunch together. So I said, it won't be a problem if the students sit together in one laboratory room, but I don't want to sit there or I don't need to sit there and other colleagues of me don't want to sit there uh, together with the students. So I recorded uh, the instructions, how to set up the instrument and how to, which buttons to push on the instrument as a video sent this to the students. The students could look at this um, instructions as a video and then came to the lab and did the experiment themselves with the instruments. But, but just always just uh, two or three students then who would anyhow uh, sleep together in one room so that there would be no, no COVID problem for them. Um, so these are the three approaches that we used to make 
like online laboratories and online lectures and stuff. Okay, I'm looking into the room if there are more questions. I'm shortly looking on my cell phone if something happened here. Uh, I'm not sure. Okay, so I'm, um, there, there are two viewers online. So if you have questions, I'm just looking at the chat right now, then please uh, retype your question in the chat because I've probably missed it. And I can maybe go back to the, to the question tool here, but nothing uh, showing up here. Okay, so then final round, some more questions. Some more comments. There's one more question. Uh, what should we do if uh, all the time we end up in presentation and ask you some difficult questions that you don't know by now? Yeah, th this, is, this is also a typical question, and th there is no good answer. If you are not really sure, um, it, and it, it also depends. I mean, if it's like a presentation at the university that is kind of some exam, then uh, professors and lecturers might ask you some questions that you that you will not know and that you cannot know and just to check what what you will be doing what will happen and then it's in in such an like exam um presentation it's uh people want to see how you think so don't don't say directly i i don't know i can't answer this but but uh, say something like um, I, I don't know, but in my opinion, it might be like this and this, and it could be like this and this, and it, it, maybe a solution to this problem was, would be this and that. Um, if you are at some conference and if you know, okay, there will be lots of people in the room much smarter than me because they have much more experience and, they, and you get some question that you cannot answer, then just say, okay, I, I'm sorry, uh, I've, I've not yet thought about this problem. Interesting question. I will note it down um, and we can talk about this in the coffee break. This is usually a very polite answer. Um, and then people will say, okay, let, let's talk about this later on in the coffee break uh, while having some coffee. And uh, yeah, sometimes let's say in, in, um, in these uh, science slam like presentations, or if you're giving a talk to a broader audience who's maybe not really scientific, there's a nice story about uh, Max Planck a famous German uh, physicist, you have heard of him? Yeah. And I think he worked somewhere in the 1920s or 1930s. And he, um, and I mean, at this time, the internet was not invented. Uh, there were not so many photograph like pictures in newspapers. So people would not know how other people would look like. Um, and Max Planck was traveling around in Germany with a car, with a chauffeur, with, with his driver, to go to different cities to give talks and scientific presentations about his work at different universities. And I'm not sure, he has maybe given the presentation the, uh, 10 times or 15 times or 20 times, and he was a little tired and he was a little bored, and his driver would have listened to his presentation also already 10 times or 15 times or 20 times. So he said, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm so tired today to his driver, can't you give the presentation? And then his driver said, oh, no problem. I've heard it so many times, I will do it. So his driver was, and people when, did not know, is this Max Planck, is this Max Planck? So the driver would give his presentation and presentation was very nice and he explained everything very well. And then of course, there was a question at the end that the driver, who was giving the presentation could not answer because he was not Max Planck, he was just a driver. So then he said, oh, this is, this is an interesting question. This is a good question. But you know, this question is, is so simple, even my driver can answer it. And so he handed the question over to, to the real Max Planck and then he would stand up and answer the question. And this is something that I would also advise if you, if you go to conferences, um, and present some work there, usually the work is done together with some colleagues or you have a supervisor or you have some, some colleague that helped you with some measurements or simulations. And sometimes it just helps to pass the question to another person or say, 
I'm not an expert for this. I cannot answer this, but I'm quite sure that my colleague can help out. And again, we can discuss this in the, in the coffee break. So I will shortly check, but no more questions here. Sure. <laughs> Exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, so the question is how, how to not be that nervous. As said, uh, practice a little bit. If you know it's an important presentation, um, don't prepare the slides on the really last moment. Uh, prepare a little time in advance so that you can practice. I usually prepare my slides <laughs> in the really last moment because then I'm, it's more easy for me to remember all stuff, but it's, it's, it's not, not the best idea. So prepare the slides, let's say one week in advance, sleep over it, think a little bit about it, um, do a trial presentation maybe with some of your friends, maybe with some members of your family. Um, then yeah, if, if coffee makes you more nervous, then don't drink coffee. Uh, right before the presentation, um, some people give the advice: if you are if you are really really nervous, drink a small glass of champagne or, or something like this. Depends. And yeah, and and as I said, the advice when I was when I was a student and I was sent to my first conference, my supervisor told me, Matthias, don't be afraid. The conference language is not English, it's bad English, because everyone, almost everyone else attending the conference, uh, for them, English will also not be their mother language, not their mother tongue. So um, it's the same difficulty, the same burden for them. And yeah, and, and this is definitely true. But, but of course, sometimes you go to conferences where there are also lots of American people and American people then, of course, have no problem in speaking English. And usually they also give very good presentations. And then it's, it's a, it can be quite a challenge to give a presentation of similar quality, but, but at least you can try. Yeah? And what helps is, as I said, practice, practice, practice a little bit uh, in advance. Okay, the, the, this, there seems to be the moment where there are no more questions, uh, which is excellent. So I don't know, will we now have uh, some coffee break here or what? Yes. Yeah. We will continue. Okay. So, but then um, again, thanks. And photo. And photo. Okay. So uh, then, then I would just switch on, uh, switch off the live stream. So again, thanks for your time. Thanks for your attendance. Thanks for the excellent questions uh, to everyone. And. Um,